time will be translated. So if somebody has a problem with us teaching, we reign for a thousand years, and then we get translated, and then we reign for a thousand years. My question to brothers who who have an issue with that is, why does it say they will live and reign with Christ a thousand years? Now, I'm willing to, listen, y'all, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think this is a salvific topic. I mean, we got to do what we got to do to get there to see if we get a thousand years or eternity regardless. So I don't think this is a salvific topic. So if anybody kid, kid mm-hmm. wants to come on here and talk about it, I'm open to it. You can maybe explain the scriptures that I'm going to present in a different light that I'm looking at it. Right. So I'm always open for correction. Hey, so I'm always open for correction. But I ask everybody who says we're going to live forever and ever 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 and ever. Why does it say in Revelation 20, they shall live and reign with Christ a thousand years? And as of yet, I haven't got an answer for that. Maybe a brother can can give me some understanding on that. Just being real. Right. So. All right. Shalom. This is a hard one. Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Kal Halayim, La Yahweh, by Hashem Yahawashai, by Hashem, Harakar Kodash, by Amar. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, Nagwati, my children that believe sincerely in truth around the four corners of the earth. Yeah, man, you, you heard it yourself, man. Uh, what's that guy named Deacon? Uh, the Deacon from Sakari, the rapper, slash ex gangbanger, whatever you call yourself, man. This guy here, man. Um, he breaking down the scriptures all wrong and what it is is he putting it out there because he don't really know how to break it down and it's just clear man you know by his statements you know if anybody could break it down for me and just let me know so that's basically a stumbling block if you don't know if he doesn't know the the the, the confident breakdown on that scripture he shouldn't be bringing it out but instead he bringing it out like yeah it's a thousand years because the scriptures say we're going to reign with the Lord for a thousand years. It don't say anything after that, though. It doesn't say anything pertaining to us having to translate into the heavens after that. He can't find me one, what he, what he like to say, scripture, chapter, verse. <laughs> chapter, scripture, verse. That's what, he, that's what they talk. He can't find one that says every every thousand years we're going to translate into the heavens it doesn't say that man so he's he's he, he made that up all right he made it up maybe he heard it somewhere before but that's not true man you know he made it up because <clears throat> he's taking that scripture out of context all right where it says we're going to reign with the lord a thousand years it's not talking about anything pertaining to us reigning for a thousand years gaining the kingdom and then having to translate he don't like to say die but translate right into the heavens to go see the father we're gonna be able to see the father in the new bodies man you know we're gonna forever ever be with the lord yahweh shai be able to go in and out of the spirit realm yeah but not every thousand years you gotta um but the lord said uh his spirit should not always dwell with with man but the lord said in the kingdom we're gonna be gods so there's no reason for him to pull that spirit back, you know? He's going to put it into a righteous flesh that's going to live forever. So let's get into it, man. Because um, that's what he's doing. He's putting the stumbling block out there. He says it's not salvific, meaning pertaining to salvation. You know, Jake learned these damn words, and they try to try to sound intelligent when they're not, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't sound, he said it's not salvific. So it's really not important. Well, why are you bringing it out then? Everything in the scriptures is, is is pertaining to our salvation. Let me get that. All right, because the Lord told us to search the scriptures. So all over the scripture, the Lord said what the, uh, is written of Him. All right. So a- every word in the scriptures is important, and it has to be taught uh, uh, correctly, man. They have to give out the proper vibration, and that's the car's fault. They never play the tune correctly, man. Imagine somebody in your band, they always playing out of tune and shit. But be the most proudest ones. Showing up every damn day on time and everything, but messing the song up. This is John 5 and um, 39. Um, Search the scriptures, 
for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they that are and they are they which testify of me all right so the scriptures man they don't say one scripture here you know uh what it says here a little there a little precept upon precept you know it don't say you're supposed to um believe this and don't believe that every this is a this um uh you know you can you can say hey uh uh what did he just say man um we're, we're not gonna live a thousand past a thousand years in the kingdom we're gonna have to um <clears throat> translate into the spirit realm well that's not that's not scriptural man all right because what they're bringing in is heresies man they're just creating heresies so that's blasphemy of the holy spirit so he's saying it doesn't pertain to sal salvation it's not salvific so we shouldn't be talking about it why bring it up you know he said the brother from gms asked the question you know right there he should have said well it's not pertaining to salvation so we're not gonna go into it but instead, he made video, a couple videos about it, saying, yeah, the thousand years, we're going to be translated into the heavens, and then we're going to come back down to the earth. That doesn't make sense. You know why? Because check this out. Right here, the Lord said that we're going to inhabit the heavens, man. You know, we're going to be able to uh, go into eternity. With, uh, scriptures say, what? As in heaven, so shall it be upon earth. All right? So that's going to gonna be part of eternity. You know? The earth and the heavens is part of eternity, man. The Lord said he, he's going to keep that forever. You know, just the kingdoms and the nations, they fall and grow upon the earth, just like the grasses and the herbs. Yeah, all right. But the Lord said, well, we're going to inhabit the heavens. So what the hell is this dude talking about every thousand years? We're going to, we're going to be on different planets, man. You're going to be doing all kind of stuff. John 14 and um, 2. In my father's house are many mansions. Man, it's talking about planets. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That ye, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way ye know. All right, so... Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the Father. He don't need to... He, he still got this um, glorified body. The new body, the first one that got the new bodies, man. He don't need to transform into the spirit realm and go back and forth. You know, when he show up, he, he's straight off the throne. He coming straight here. All right. So we're going to be just like him. We're going to be put on a new flesh. And that's it. You're going to be able to transition into the spirit realm, however that happens. But you're not going to have to every thousand years. It don't make sense. A thousand years and then die. Um, I, hear like, you know, I ain't saying die, but you're going to be translated. Show me in the scriptures. It don't say that, man. What it says, we're going to reign a thousand years. We, yeah, well, let's get that. Before I get it, I'm going to get this real quick. Second Peter 2 and 1. But there were false prophets among the people, man. That's what he is, a false prophet, Sakari and them. They're false prophets, man. It is what it is. They get mad. People get mad. they just false prophets. They're plain and simple. You know? they false prophets, man. Some people get fooled and bamboozled, but, the you know, the sincere, whatever, man. Anybody can see that they're just false prophets. All right? But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be teachers, false teachers among you. Mm, 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 mm. Isn't it dude teaching falsehoods? Which privily shall bring in, all right, damnable heresies, man. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And they've been denying the Lord, saying you're not supposed to worship Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, they, you know, bringing in all kind of damn heresies, man. And um, now the one we're dealing with now is uh, saying that we're gonna we're not gonna live past a thousand years. And we're gonna be translated every thousand years, and that's not in the scriptures, man. They they made that up. All right. So a heresy is what? This is a heresy. It says um, a belief or opinion contrary. To the orthodox, orthodox meaning right, all right, 
a religion a religious doctrine man a court you know so they, they they teach contrary to the proper doctrine pertaining to salvation because that's, that's our salvation we hope for to live forever we hope to live for eternity all right eternal life now check this out this dude can't he can't expound on how long eternity is man it don't say that in the script eternity is forever and ever and ever it don't end man it just goes in the loop it just goes forever it's, the, it's called the present being with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai out in the heavens that's the present man down here on earth we deal with time the sun and the moon going around the earth creating time growth and dying and death and decay upon the earth and age and the most high is controlling all that you know, through Yahweh Shai alright so it says what um they said through him was not anything made that was made so Yahweh made everything through Yahweh Shai that's why every time we speak we'll say Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai yeah certain proper uh, uh, you know uh, language grammar some people may say it like yeah uh, um, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is, is coming that's not Yahweh coming in the name of Yahweh Shai. It would be the other way around. Yahweh Shai is coming in the name of Yahweh. So proper grammar, but but most of the brothers, they, if they slip with their tongue, it is what it is. They sincere and what they mean by that. All right. But um, yeah, let me get this real quick. So this is Sirach one and two. Who can number the sand of the sea? So who can number the sand of the sea and the drops of rain in the days of eternity, man? So Sakari and them can't number the days of eternity. They can, oh yeah, well, it's just, we're going to live a thousand years. That's eternity. The Lord said we're going to live for eternity, man. It don't mean you're going to die or shed off your damn flesh every thousand years because it need a break. All right, I may have to break this up into two parts. I've been running out of memory on my phone lately, man. So I'm going to try to make this quick. And I'm at the uh, two part lesson of Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. So this is in the kingdom, all right? This is this is when the Lord gives the, um, the kingdom to the, the elect of Israel, all right? The first fruits, and that's very important to understand as you're entering into the scripture, all right, in context. And that's what they're doing, they're taking it out of context, man. Yeah, it said we're going to reign a thousand years. But what does it say after that? It's a context to it, man. Let's read it. It says, And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. When were they beheaded? The same ones that were beheaded in 70 AD and beyond, or, or during the time of Yahweh Shai. Like John. All right, so John basically saw himself ruling in the kingdom. He was seeing a vision of himself all the other prophets that were killed and beheaded back then and the believers they're back on this earth today standing upon their feet walking risen again resurrected but the Lord said he's gonna resurrect us as a nation now and if somebody kills kills a person in this truth he's gonna be able to resurrect them raise them back up all right means to re resurrect means to stand up again and he promises that we we will stand up again and be on this earth again. We're back here today in that spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai as he promised us. As waiting for salvation and deliverance so we can live forever, man, in righteousness. All right. See, he, can, he just see this earth. That's it. Like we're just going to transition every thousand years and come back here. Note, this is the first. It's going. There's many mansions out there. All right. And every thousand years, we're not gonna have that. It don't say that in the scriptures, man. He's making that up. He's like, how can you tell? You're not. You haven't lived a thousand eternity. Nobody knows yet. Well, why are you putting it out there? Then that's a stumbling block. You're casting a stumbling block in the people's way. All right. Everybody focusing on prophecy, teaching, teaching the correct doctrine, trying their best, and then he throw this out there. Hey, they go curveball. Y'all want to figure this out? You know what I'm saying? 
All right, it says here, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw, because when is this going to happen? Let's go back up. Revelation 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key of the bottom of his pit and a great chain in his hand. All right. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. You know, so that goes up to uh, after 70 AD where you had uh, Nerva, you know, and the so-called Negroes started taking over after Domitian. And that goes all up until about um, the 12th century, 1266 AD when the Ottoman Turks started coming back out and taking over again, man. Then you had the Renaissance after that. So that's what this is right here. They were brought down over there in Europe. All right. And it says, um, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And we're witnessing that today. This, that, this is that little season. Because why people think, what, a thousand years is, is, is a lot, but it's really only a day to the Lord. All right, he's not slack uh, um, uh, as men count slackness. So he's going to judge Esau. This is just a little season they've been loosed upon this earth as a sword, right? And um, a weapon of mass destruction. And now what? It says, uh, now, see, this, this Revelation 20 skips around. You, you know, it jumps around. You got to understand that as you're reading it. So right here it says what? And I saw the thrones. See, this was a vision. After that, he saw a vision in the future. And they set upon them, and, and judgment was given unto them. All right. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh. So he like, yo, I seen the same ones that I saw here. They were there, sitting on thrones. Now he saw he saw uh, John the Baptist and Peter and them and Paul. All right, John the Revelator was one of the last ones alive. You know? And he's like, yo, um, I saw them same people sitting on thrones in the kingdom. So the Lord gonna bring them back. They, we're back here today. Set up for salvation. All right. It says, um, and for the word, they were beheaded for the for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of Yahweh. Yeah, you're gonna have some people beheaded in these times, but it's really talking about back then. Those same people are gonna be sitting on thrones, man. And they're gonna they're gonna overcome the beast real soon. They're gonna overcome. They've already overcome. They're born in these times, and have received the word and understanding of Yahweh Shai, the spirit of Yahweh Shai again. The spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophet. The spirit of the false prophet gonna still be the false prophets. All right. So now. It says, um, in the word of Yahweh, which had not worshipped. So like, I'm going to read it again so it'll be clear. And I saw the souls of them which were, that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. And for the word of Yahweh. And which had not worshipped the beast. So in these times, they're not going to worship uh, um, the beast, man. Which is basically the European Union, NATO, and America all together. All right. Esau system. They're not going to submit to it. That's what it means to worship. Neither his image, neither his system, all right? Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So they're not going to receive, they're, they're not going to receive that, that uh, MOTB, man. The elect are here today and they're not going to receive it. Period. This is prophesied. That's why it's important. This scripture right here. He's saying it's not pertaining to salvation. Yes, it is, man. It's not salvific. Man, sipping his damn tea. Got like a heathen spirit, man. You know what's it called? Uh, a niggerish, a nigger type of spirit. All right. It says, and in their hands. So they they're not going to take the MOTB, and they. 
and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shah a thousand years. See, he would take that. See, see, that's it. We, that's all we're going to live to. They don't say anything else. No, what that means is these are going to be the first fruits that usher in the kingdom. It's going to take a thousand years of that punishment on Esau. And after a thousand years, they're going to be wiped off the face of the earth. That's why the Lord said what? The, the, matter of fact, I'm going to get this real quick before I go to the next verse. Because the next verse helps you to understand the context. But what this guy is saying, he's saying right there, that means we're going to live for a thousand years and that's it. That's what he got from that. Let me read the next verse, verse five. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. That's very important. That breaks down the context of that verse in verse four, chapter, uh, you know, verse four. All right. So the rest of the dead, what is that? The Lord said, we're going to be fruitful in the kingdom. We're going to have a lot of children in the kingdom. He's going to make a speedy recovery of us. So the ones that perish in this side, two, th uh, two thirds, they're going to be brought back into the kingdom, man. That's not talking about after a thousand years. Now they get to come back. No, that's talking about these nations. All right. Where it says in verse five, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. The rest of the dead, meaning these heathens. They're not going to get any form of living. They're going to be in straight hardcore bondage for a thousand years. After that, they're still going to be under us, under our foot. But they, they're going to have some form of living. You know, it's going to be a, a system after that. Set up by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. So I don't see how he got. I can see how he got that from this, you know, it's confusion. But that's a low level way of thinking that the rain with Yahweh Shai for a thousand years. Now he's like, yeah, that's it. We're going to translate into the heavens and come. Where did you get that from? They don't say that right here. It says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. That means the rest of these nations. And what I say to Esau, it said, this is the first resurrection. This represents all this is part of the first resurrection, the resurrection of Israel as a nation. You know, the elect starting with the elect and then the uh, two thirds later. And then the resurrection of these nations where they're going to be uh, built up in some form of, you know, a fashion. But Esau is going to be wiped off the earth after a thousand years. That's it. That's how you break down the scripture. All right. Verse six. Blessed and holy. So meaning blessed and separate, set apart. Favorite. Is he that have part in the first resurrection being as a nation of Israel gets exalted. All right. And set back up upon the excuse me, set up upon this earth. So they're gonna be resurrected first. That'll be the elect, the ones that have that, that are blessed to take part in walking through the gates of the kingdom. On such the second death have no power. The second death with those missiles, that fire. But they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Yahweh Shai, and shall reign with him a thousand years. All right, so that means what? At, they're going to reign with him. To to reign means to, to to take and build up the kingdom for a thousand years. It don't say anything about us having to die and all that. Translate. It's just saying that the, that, that's just it. It's just that's the focal point. They're going to reign for a thousand years, man. They they just ushering in the kingdom. These these ones that go in first. You know the ones that usher in the kingdom first. They're going to reign with Yahweh, bringing in the kingdom. The founding fathers. The foundation gonna take a thousand years to build. That's what they're saying right there. After that, it's eternity, man. It's back to work. You know, we're gonna rest for a thousand years, then it's back to work, back to the building, man. We're gonna build out the heavens. That's the way you need to be thinking when you read this. Because in the beginning, Bariashia, the Lord rested for a thousand years, and then he went on to build humanity again. And build the nations and build us you know the story so now we're in that situation again we're coming up to this this uh the last trump going into the seven thousand year that thousand year period it's gonna be a straight rest and after that we're gonna be back working again in a sense man we're not gonna have to work like physical work 
but we're gonna be back building the heavens now you know whatever else is next but the focus is gonna be on Esau for a thousand years <laughs> in these nations <laughs> alright so so right here it says what blessed and holy no where was that uh, so now that's when the scriptures I told you in Revelation 20 it bounces around because it says right here and Yahweh Shai and it says and shall reign with him a thousand years man alright and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison so that's talking about something else now it's kind of went back to the beginning what it was talking about about about, uh, about Esau going into the pit and then about him being loose for a thousand years alright and that was all up until about 1266 AD with the Ottoman Turks you can look it up alright going to the 1400s and you had the fall of Rome in 410 AD as well all the way from the time of Nerva all the way up until that you know first century AD and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison so that's talking about now and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magi talking about Russia to gather them together to battle the number of whom is at the sands of the sea so talking about World War 3 basically alright so it jumps around so now let's get some clarity on that thousand years how much time I got because it didn't say anything about that I want to make that note it didn't say anything about us having to translate into the heaven they just said we're going to reign with him for a thousand years blessed are those that have that take part in that you know saying yo I'm going to open my store and trust me you want to be one of the first ones in there that's what it's saying alright we'll have all that time with you and the Lord to build to build the kingdom up and, and, and to uh have their foot on the enemy's neck on Esau's neck and after a thousand years the Lord gonna have some some form of mercy on these nations alright Isaiah 14 and 12 how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did is weak in the nation see that's gonna be the focus in the kingdom Lucifer the light bearers Esau the Illuminati those elites teeming all right, and they weaken the nations through their um through their wickedness, man, their iniquity. All right, through their business deals, robbing, stealing, and killing through their fake, funny money, the dollar. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven; I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahweh. See, no other nation really did that, but Esau did that, man. They put their face in the book painted themselves as the Lord all kind of stuff man and put us in slavery I have exalted I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahweh and they've exalted their throne that's why the scripture says it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth because they are, they were set over us according to Deuteronomy 28 and Esau has set themselves over the stars meaning the children of Israel alright and also out in the heavens I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north so they did that in North America I will ascend above the heights so they basically went around the whole world you know and that's when you have them uh, called the great expedition when they sent out explorers over here to what they call the new world alright and it says um, they that see wait yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit so they're gonna be brought down again <laughs> to that low condition all right over there in europe man they're gonna be brought down into the caves again all right but this time forever they're gonna fall this time and never rise again but in revelation 20 it said they, they rose up again all right but in this time they're not gonna ever rise up again man because that goes back to Genesis where it says uh, the serpent shall bite his heel he shall bruise his head but he shall uh, wound thy heel or something like that 
that's talking about them taking us down biting us on the heel tripping us up as a nation but it's a big difference when you get he said uh, thou shall wound his head so how was y'all gonna show up and strike them on the head man the head of the serpent and destroy all their power they're gonna be put out of commission big difference man you get tripped up by the heel to get bashed in the head they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the earth to tremble is this Esau is this the cave man and they was just ruling the world what happened that did shake kingdoms all right look at Alexander for instance that made the world as a wilderness wow made the world into a desert a dry place man a wickedness you know and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners they make money off of pe keeping people in prison all the kingdoms of the nations even all of them lie in glory everyone in his own place see in the kingdom in our kingdom in Yahweh Shai's kingdom all these nations gonna lie in their own glory in some form or fashion you know but they, they're gonna worship Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and they're gonna submit to the children of Israel forever all right so this was, this goes with Revelations 20 where it said the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were, were finished because you'll think all right all the kings of the nations even all of them lie in glory everyone in his own house you'll say when is that going to happen so so you mean to tell me when Yahweh Shah show up they're all going to still have their glory and their kingdom no they, they're still under idolatry the Persians the Elamites and all them they're going into hardcore slavery man and uh, it says in the scripture that they're going to have to bring um, all their uh, riches unto us you know and they're going to show up certain times a year to praise the Lord <laughs> so um, so what is this talking about what it's saying is after that thousand years that's when all the kings of the nations all right, after the, after the, the first fruits reign for a thousand years the elect of Israel all the kings of the nations even all of them lie in glory every one in his own house so they're all going to have their own form of, of living and they're going to be thankful that the elect are in power that righteousness is ruling the earth because the scriptures say that when the wicked are in power the people mourn let me get that I'm not going to get I want to move on with the scripture but it says that though you know uh, and all the right, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, man, all the nations, lie in glory. Every one in his own house. But thou, it's talking about Esau, man, Edom. But thou art cast out of thy grave, the dragon, right, the beast, like an abominable branch. So they're gonna be cast out, man, in their low condition when they brought down to the grave, brought low in the. And in hell, looking up in in in, in slavery, they're gonna be cast out of that as an as an abominable branch, as the bloodline of Esau, as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as wow man, they get blended into the system. <laughs> They gonna get they gonna get translated. <laughs> Esau gonna get translated. All of them as a nation, genocide. The Lord gonna destroy their whole gene. N none of them gonna have a none of those spirits that are in those bodies of Esau gonna have a body to come back into on this earth. A, you know, a bloodline. So the same way you put a a a, a dead uh, what's the word. A rag from a dead body, it goes into the grave with the body, and then the uh, then what it it um, decomposes, you know, dematerializes. Man, that's what Esau are gonna do. They're gonna decompose as a nation. All right, but that's after a thousand years. That's the focus of Revelations twenty. Okay. 
It says, thou shalt not be joined with them in the burial. All right. So the, so the Lord said, they're not, Esau is not going to be joined with these nations when they fully put up under the Lord's feet. Uh, feet. Esau is going to be what? Out of this earth. And the other nations, they're going to have a foot on their neck for a thousand years, man. After that, that the Lord going to let up some of that pressure off his footstool. All right. So thou shall be cast out of that grave like an abominable branch. So like in verse 20, thou shall not be joined with them in the burial. All right, if what scriptures say, the rich man died also, and he lift up his eyes in hell. He's going he gonna to wake up these nations of, of Edom, and they're going to be in hardcore bondage and slavery upon the earth. All right. So that's the burial. Because thou has destroyed thy land and slain thy people and the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities man so that's what they got coming to them all right so the lord is saying right there at the thousand years esau gonna be cut off man as a nation it's gonna start here uh, scripture said they're going to be turned into hell. How is that going to start with the missiles? All right. And after that, what? Hell is going to be a, um, slavery. All right. Obadiah 1 and 9. And thy mighty men, O Teman, that's those elites, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau, so to the end, man, this is their end, that of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. All right, so they're going to be cut off by slaughter. That's the judgment that the Lord got set up for them. That, that, you know, after a thousand years, the Lord going to have the, the nation of Israel slaughter them. Some people say fire. Some people say they're going to be kicking their ass, you know. But I, I say he's going to be kicking their ass because they say they're going to kindle in them, meaning they're going to hotly pursue them. All right, it's going to be a flame. We're gonna kindle in a minute to hotly pursue, like like a cop on I'm on a hot pursuit. And we chase, woo, woo, <laughs> chase him down. The Lord gonna say, uh, "Go get him, hunt him down like predator, and eradicate him off the earth all in one day." And that's gonna happen in the kingdom. All right. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. See if you ask. Sakari, they say it forever means a thousand years, and that's it. So you mean Esau can come back? <laughs> Let me keep going. All right, so this is Sirach 18 and 10. As a drop of water unto the sea, all right? So if we're going to live for a thousand as a drop of water, and then what, translate and that? Nah, man, nope, nope. The Lord said he's going to give us our heart's desire, and that's not a desire a brother would want to have to leave that flesh the, the new flesh he's going to give us to be unclothed Paul said that he said not that I should be unclothed but to be clothed upon you know and and uh, to, be, to be translated into the heavens is basically to die man Eden, uh, what's his name Enoch Elijah they both died they just didn't the Lord said they didn't see death he took them away from that pain of it he took them, but they were translated, meaning that character back then died off and they became somebody new. They went to the spirit realm and they were brought back as children on this earth. All right. Elijah became who? John. John became who? Later on, Abba Bivens. Different bodies. So, to, so, to go into the heavens and be translated, we're going to die off these bodies, man. We're going to be given new flesh. All right. That way it says spirit, uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. All right. So in the kingdom, we're not going to need to be translated anymore. We're going to have the bodies from the heavens coming down from the father. So why would we need to be translated into the heavens? A thousand, every thousand years. He just, he just can't, this guy, Deacon over there, Sakari, he cannot fathom 
forever and ever. You can hear how he said it. If you go back and play it, he's like, forever and ever, never, never, never. Like, he don't like that. He don't like that. I would like, I would love that. Because that would mean you're just present. All right, right now we're caught up in this thing called time. In the kingdom, we're going to be able to watch time and be present with the Father forever. Just like Yahweh Shai is. He don't have to go to sleep or be translated every thousand years. He's on the right hand of the Father, the first one of us, as an example. Still alive to this day. He said, I am alive forevermore. You know, he said he gonna, that he'll make us like him. He said, we shall be as him. <laughs> he said he's alive forevermore, man. What the hell? All right. Sirach 18 and 10. As a drop of water unto the sea, and a gravel stone is comparison of the sand, so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. You know, so the days of eternity, as so are what? As a gravel, a little grain of sand is, it's compared to, to, a, to, a, to sand. So are a thousand years to the days of eternity, man. There's no end to it, eternity. All right, you had to picture a tiny grain of sand and then picture a giant beach, <laughs> all the sand all over the earth. That's eternity compared to one grain of sand. So, you know, we're going to have to have bodies for that. We're going to be able to sleep. We're going to be able to rest. We're going to be able to transition into the heavens you know, with the with those bodies going to the spirit realm. You know, just like Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the Father. And he said he uh he carried he's the first being that carried that flesh, uh has flesh out in the in the heavens. It said he's like a lamb slain. This is in the heavens, man, this is in the spirit realm. Revelation five and one, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals right and this is in the spirit realm we get that real quick this is in eternity this is Isaiah 57 and 15 um, for thus saith the high all right, <laughs> the most high man and lofty one alright the lofty one exalted that inhabiteth Eternity. So his habitation, where he lives at, is in eternity. All right? So he, he inhabits eternity, man. It's, it's just nothing but future. That's it. Present, future. Present, future. Just future. All right? And that's what the Lord represents, man. He can go into the past. He can go into the future. He can create time from one end to the other. And he also he exists in eternity. Time is just a, a figment of the Lord's imagination that we exist in upon this earth. When he created the sun, moon, and stars, on the first day he created what? Time. All right? One day, two day, and a thousand years you know, on, that's one day to the Lord. And, and continue on to this day. We have the proof of it. So now, what's what's eternity? It says, "aida" uh, or "aid." It means a terminus, a duration, advance, perpetuity. Because even that, even eternity is beneath Yahweh, man. You know. But it's it's it's, it's not about the experience. It's not about. The universe and the earth is about us. It's about us being a part of Yahweh, part of that eternity, making us like him. Okay. Perpetuity forever. See, when you see forever, it's talking about eternity. Continuing future. That's it. No end. <laughs> He's going to keep on writing it. Yeah, he going to keep on writing it into existence. Ancient of past time, forever, or future time, of continuous existence, man. So we're going to exist continually, not thousand years and then not exist on earth. No, 
You go a thousand years, you're gonna exist. All right, forever of Yahweh's existence. All right, so Isaiah fifty-seven and fifteen. For thus saith the high and lofty one, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, Yahweh. I dwell in the high and the holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And that's what the Lord is doing from his throne through Yahweh Shai the Lamb. All right, because he's the author of it. He's writing the story. Um, that's right. Uh, uh, Hebrews 5 and... um. Where was it? At? Where is it? At? Here you go. Uh, Hebrews five and eight. Though he were a son, yet learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Talking about Yahweh Shai, and he, Yahweh was going to exalt the humble, right? And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey. So he's writing it. He's writing our story, man. All right, and he said what? He's the author of our eternal salvation. So what does that mean? Psalms 90 and 9. For all of our days that passed away in thy wrath. All right, when the Lord was angry with us, but now he, he, he uh, is going to give life to us. Check this out. We spend our years as a tale that is told. So who's the author of it? Yahweh Shai, all right, from Yahweh. And he's going to write out our eternity. As he exists forever, eternity, for future, 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 keep going. In righteousness, man. When I was little, I was afraid of that, me and my mother. But now she's in eternity. And towards the end, towards um, the time of her passing, she was able to learn about eternity. She's the only one in my family that believed in Yahweh besides me. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, and the last thing she told me was to soar in your mind. You know, but we were afraid of that. We talked about it when I was little to forever, forever, forever. That's how he said it just now. I was just forever, forever, ever. <laughs> but it's like, yo, it's nothing to be afraid of, man, because the Lord going to make it. He said he's going to satisfy us and show us the treasures of immortality. He's going to satisfy us with, uh, you know, that's why when we, when you get into the body, it's going to be like a dream. There you go. All right, because when the, when the Lord delivers the elect, the first fruits that are set up to reign with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in the kingdom, to usher in the kingdom for a thousand years and to rebuild the foundations and, you know, rebuild the temple and all of that through hardcore slavery of Esau for a thousand years and these nations. It says this, when the, when Psalms 126 and 1, when Yahweh turneth again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed, man. It's going to be like a dream. It's going to be like a nightmare we was living, you know. And you're going to wake up into another dream, which is going to be um, salvation and eternity. You're not going to remember what it's like to die. You know, in these bodies, we these bodies decay every day. So we don't these bodies don't like living forever. They you know these bodies want to die. They want to go back to the ground where it came from. It's the spirit that's willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> the flesh is like, yo, I, I can't do this, man. <laughs> so we need them bodies, man. Them bodies are gonna want to thrive. They're gonna want to conquer and consume the wickedness that's out here what you know the lord gonna give us righteous bodies man you get what i'm saying so it's gonna be a whole different mindset we're gonna want to be eternal right now the, the the elect the sincere ones have a hope of immortality let me get that all right this is wisdom of solomon three and one but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of yahweh and there shall no torment touch them and that happened Especially too, um, as we read in Revelation 20, the souls of them that sat upon the thrones that were beheaded. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. Ooh, they, was, they were in peace, man. You know, that's what it is in the heavens and spirit realm, peace. 
Book of Job speaks about that. You know, the Lord said they were in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. We got a hope in Yahweh Shai and it's full of, to, of, of being immortal. All right. Even if you read Second Maccabees chapter seven, um, what's her name? The, the woman spoke about us being immortal one day, being resurrected on this earth, standing upon this earth again, set up for immortality. All right. Second Ezra's um, two and forty five, just to get to the point. He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing. Who is that? The 144 and the 130 elect that that um, are blessed to usher in the kingdom for a thousand years with the Lord. And after that, the rest of the nation is going to get their form of, of living upon this earth. And all of that is going to be a process. You know, and we're going to build out, we're going to uh, build on the heavens, out in the planets, inhabit the planet space. It's going to be so much to do, man. You know, it's busy out there in the heavens, man. Uh, every time you look and you see chariots out there, they're moving, they're going, and the angels, they go to and from before the Lord, carrying our prayers, setting prophecies up, controlling things upon the earth. We're a part of that. All right, Second Ezra 2, and um, 45, and he answered and said to me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing. What's that? The, 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 the body and the blood that came from the first Adam. The only example we're going to have of that in the kingdom is going to be Yahweh Shai. All right? He carried that body with him up into the heavens. All the way up into the throne of Yahweh. Ours is going to be translated before we get to the chariot. <laughs> That's how dirty we are, man. <laughs> All right, so Revelation 5, it speaks about Yahweh Shai standing in front of the throne of Yahweh in the spirit realm as a lamb that was slain. Okay. So it says, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and receive palms, man. All right, so we, there's not going to be any need to translate anymore once we get those bodies. They're going to be spiritual as well. These bodies are spiritual, but it's just, it's from the earth. It's earthy. You know? All right, so Yahweh Shah took that body up into the heavens. He was glorified. The first one of us, man. All right, for him to come back into the earth, he's not hes not going to have to be translated into the heavens every thousand years, just like we're not going to have to be translated every thousand years. He's been on the right hand of the Father all this time. In the flesh. All right. Revelations 5 and 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book. And loose the seven seals thereof. That's the prophecies. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, the four angels, and in the midst of the throne of Yahweh, and in the midst of the elders, right? Yahweh is a spirit, man. He, he you know, Yahweh Shai is a spirit, but he gave him that flesh, man, the first fruit of us. Um and stood, it said, there stood a lamb, talking about Yahweh Shai, as it, as it had been slain, okay? As it had been slain, man. Having seven head, horns and seven eyes, talking about the churches and the angels, which are the seven spirits of Yahweh sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, man. Mm. Right? So right here, what does it say? And every creature which is in heaven, so every creation that's in heaven, the angels, and and on the earth, all right, every create, creation that's on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in the earth, you got their bunkers and all that, right? Um, and all that are in them, heard I saying, 
Bless, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. Why? Because their kingdom is going to be a kingdom that never ends. It's going to be forever and ever. You know? So it's not going to be a reason for us to a thousand years we transition into the heavens. and No, nah, we're going to be on guard everywhere. The Lord said, what? It's not going to be anywhere uh, you're not going to see the children of Israel in the sea. All right. So I'm going to end it there, man. So I can do another lesson on this. Y'all right to You have uh, Sakari and them, man. They're going off again. The deacon. You know, he's not being a good overseer of his of his flock because he's leading them astray and he's egging them on to, to be wicked, man. Like the light skin boy with the uh, afro. He's clearly a novice. All right. Romans 14 and 13, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. And that's what they're doing. They're putting a stumbling block and occasion to fall in their brother's way by trying to um, discredit the apostles as far as, um, you know, uh, what you call it, um, this doctrine. All right. The scripture says you should not rebuke an elder. So he come out in the open, like, yeah, them GMS is GMS versus Sakari. Da, 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 da. He teach the truth, but, you know, but this is not the truth that they're teaching. To say in Revelation 20 that we shall reign with the Lord for a thousand years means that the thousand years we, we're going to die in some form or translate into the heavens. It doesn't say that in the scriptures. All right. That's a vain fable, a damnable heresy that he brought in, that they've creeped in. So I'm going to get one more. All right. So right here, Matthew 12 and 31. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin, sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. All right? So people like them, man, they, they're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. It's just not the truth what they're saying. And he's like, it's not salvific. No, it's just not the, it's not the damn truth, man, what you're saying, man. He's like, if anybody can teach me otherwise, well, you've just been taught otherwise. Let's see if he receives it. Because it doesn't say that there. You got to read it in the proper context. The elect going to reign for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. Blessed are those that have part in that. And then after that thousand years, the rest of the dead, meaning these nations, are going to live and have some form of living. But Esau is going to be cast out as an abominable branch. It just makes clear sense. But they're saying the opposite that that scripture is saying. All right. Breaking it down incorrectly, man. Verse 32, and whosoever speaketh a word against the son of man, and that's what they've done as well, saying you're not supposed to worship the Lord, Yahweh Shai calling him an idol. It shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world and neither in the world to come. So that's talking about, see, they probably only break that down right. They probably say, yeah, now or in the kingdom. No. We're all going to be forgiven in the kingdom. This is talking about back then, during the time of Yahweh Shah. They, they, the same one that was talking shit back then or breaking down the shit wrong and blaspheming the scriptures, the spirit, the truth. They're the same ones that's going to be back here doing the same thing today. And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing, man. That's why this guy is throwing stumbling blocks out there and being proud about it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to end it there, man. Yahweh Ratazah, I'll be able to bring out more scriptures in that spirit because there's a lot to go into when you start talking about eternity.